podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. What if you could be a better player for the cost of one more cup of coffee a month? Get access to a growing library of lit erotica, behind the scenes action, and player's guides with tips on drinking, cooking, fitness, dating, sex, and life after dark. Low tier rate while offer lasts. Patreon.com, game on with Jack. Keep it sexy and game on. The game is about chances, and there's no better representation of chance like gambling. Maybe it's slots, maybe it's cards, or maybe it's just living every day as full as you can, but gambling reminds us of taking risks. And the game, well, when it's risked, can take much or give all. And no one knows the level of game like our guest this evening. T-Town Gambler is... A gambler, <laughs> a podcast host, and YouTube personality based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. T is an expert on casino, bingo cards, and respins, as well as an influencer in the world of brand building. T Town is also tonight's guest on Game On with Jackson Stewart. Let's, let's hit it. All right, folks, you've heard the introduction and the bio. Now join me in welcoming to Game On a fascinating podcaster and gambling genius, T-Town. T, how you doing? What's up, Jackson? <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. It's always nice to have another uh, another podcaster on the show because we both know what we go through <laughs> to do this show. <laughs> uh, first up, let the audience know what platforms they can find you on and by what name. So I go by T-Town Gambler on social media. You can find me mostly on YouTube. That's where I usually drop all my content, uh, T-Town Gambler or Gambling Advisory. Gambling Advisory is what I am pushing right now. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. So, yeah, you can catch me on all those social medias on T-Town and Gambling Advisory. Now, where are you from and where did you grow up? I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And born and raised, still in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, I had first met you online, and I think it was probably about the fourth or fifth time that I figured out what the T stood for. That stood for Tulsa. Yep, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. 918. And that's when I realized that a lot of times I'm not that bright. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know so funny so many people ask me what the t stand for they be like do it stand for like uh tessalusa or somewhere in i don't know somewhere in tennessee somewhere in georgia so everybody thinks the t you know stands for something but it's tulsa you know yeah and how people be forgetting about tulsa i don't know but you know I have, it's a nice little city i've been through oklahoma maybe once and i want to say i was probably a kid i think i did hit tulsa so I, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got you. I feel you. What, um, so how'd you get into, how'd you get into, into the business? It's a two-part question. So let's, how do you get into 
gambling, you know, slot playing, card playing, and then how do you decide to take it from there to, you know, podcasting, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Okay, so in true Oklahoma fashion, it's always a story, you know what I mean? So how I started gambling, I've been gambling probably my whole life since I was a, since I was a kid, you know? My mama uh, used to have us play like Pequino, you know? Have you ever heard of Pequino? Yeah, I've heard of it. I never played it. So we used to play Pequino and we set up like dimes and we would play for dimes and stuff. So I kind of like, I was like, okay, that's where we started gambling. So we learned how to kind of like hustle. <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? So just growing up though, um, my mom and my grandma, they was gamblers. So, you know, you kind of was like, okay, when I, when I turn 18, I'm going to the gambling hall. Uh, really it's like the bingo gambling hall back then. So that's where I started at 18 gambling, playing like quarter machines, playing, tw- uh, nickel machines. And just from there, I just felt like just a love for gambling. And so at what point do you go? I love this so much. I want to go public with it. I want to like make, you know, I want to connect with other people. I want to show people what I'm doing. Like, what point do you go? I want to take it just from gambling to like broadcasting gambling and talking about it and interviewing people. So, um, I kind of like we had a, a thing where we had to move. So, when we moved, we had to move to the country, not just like oh, like down the street and then just some wooded area. But the city, right? There. No, we had to move to the. We moved to the country, <laughs> and so it's really nothing to do in a. It's nothing to do in the country, especially when you live in city life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a big change. And yeah, so we out there with the the cows, the chickens, the horses. It's just something out. I, I never like was like grew up on like a farm or nothing. So it was kind of like different. And so I moved to the country and. Basically, I was just bored because I couldn't get to the casino the way like I wanted to get to the casino, right? And so I discovered the slot community on YouTube. And back then, a lot of channels that's huge now, they was just starting out. So it's like I even I even personally now get to see how they grew. Like, they're huge channels now. So I was thinking, man, I could do that one day. And it was, it was a little, like, unheard of, like, back then, people really making money, because back then, I think people really genuinely was just playing for fun on the channels and making videos and putting it out. I don't, I mean, I really don't know, because back then, I didn't really know nothing about YouTube. And so, probably like a two, uh, like a two years, a year and a half later, I was thinking, I'm going to make me a slot channel, and... And I, but the hardest part was coming up with your name. That's the hardest thing on a social media platform, how you want to represent yourself, like the name or whatever. So I started off like with my real name. I was like Britney Slot. Nobody cared about me. It was like I couldn't get nobody to subscribe to me with Britney Slots, right? Because <laughs> that's my real name. And I was thinking, so I had to, re, I had to reevaluate myself. Coincidentally, I was chilling at the Hard Rock in Tulsa, and I was thinking, man, I got to come up with something that it's going to draw people in because I think, like, in this world of social media or whatever, sometimes you kind of got to be like, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like, I didn't want to come off as a man or a woman, but because I, I just wanted people not to judge me. Right. If that makes sense. Like, I'm trying to, like, make that make sense. Like, so I wanted a neutral name so people wouldn't. They wouldn't subscribe to me, oh, because that's a man, oh, because that's a woman. But they would subscribe to me because they liked my play. Because when I first started, I really didn't talk in videos, right? And so I I sat there and I came up with T-Town Gambler. I'm from Tulsa. Uh, They call Tulsa T-Town. And I'm a gambler, and I just put that together. And then from there on, you know, it was just me building my social media off of T-Town Gambler. So, and we're going to jump back because you make a lot of great points. What made you want to go into podcasting? What makes you want to, you know, what's that evolution for you that went from just, you know, filming you out there playing as T-Town to now you're T-Town, the interviewer? So, I think that I really grew out of the slot play. I think that it really wasn't, because I'm all about, like, trying to find my purpose in something, and 
So I play, you know, everybody has what they want to do. But for me, it just really became, it's a very expensive niche, slot play. And it, it really just wasn't something I wanted to do forever. But I really needed something that was somewhat like therapy to my life too. And, and I wanted to get to know people. And one night, literally, I was just, I kind of had the idea that I wanted to start a podcast. But, you know, that's still you. You, going back to like creating T Town Gambler, you still got to create what you want your podcast to be, right? So it came into a dream that I was thinking, "Oh, Gambling Advisory, that's the name. That's what I want to do. I want to, I want to just talk, and I want to get to know people, and I want to create a podcast." And that's how it all started from like a really a dream, and it just going from there. You know, and some points I want to, <clears throat> I want to go back and hit that that you had, you had touched on. And I think it's really important for people, whether it be, you know, in their business or even in their personal life, is that you went back. Well, you took your time and you picked a name and it didn't work. And something you did was like super powerful is that you rebranded. And a lot of people, you know, whether it be your business or even your own personal life, they don't rebrand if it ain't working. Either they're too scared or they're too proud, but like clearly that worked for you. And Britney slots wasn't working, but no. <laughs> so you went back and, and you said, I'm going to be T town. And I just want people listening. Like, don't be afraid to rebrand. It, it doesn't mean that you're not being authentic or true, but I mean, there's lots of different parts of people that you can focus on. I mean, you're always going to be Britney. That's not going to change, but yeah. T town is a different part of you than being Britney is. So I really think that that's important. I don't want people just to glaze over that as they listen to some of the details, but you know, that's important. And then you took your time, but then you acted and that's kind of a balance. Like, you know, people can be too patient or they can jump on things too fast and not think it out. Um, you know, you said you, you've been in and you saw a lot of the slot communities come up from, from scratch who are some of your influencers? And maybe they're not in the Slack community. They might be in other, you know, personal, professional writers that you've read or, or whatever. Who influences or has influenced T-Town? Well, I think truly the people who influenced me in my life is probably like my mom and my grandma because those are the people who raised me. So those are the people who ultimately created the person I am, that I am, that I'm going to be, the lessons I learned, you know, like the hard lessons, like that hard truth. They're not going to lie to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter if you feel like broken heart, they're not going to lie to you about the stuff, you know? So I feel like they, inf they mold me to know that, you know, keep going. Like you said, rebring yourself. Don't give up. Cause my grandma would be like, don't give up on just, just cause you, you not just cause it's not working out. Don't give up. Just try to figure it out a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But I think like if I had to look at people like social media or like or celebrity there, I'm not going to say no one in the slot community really are like my influence. I look at something like, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of like a DDG. You ever heard of him? No. But DDG is like an influence of, he was a YouTuber, like turned rapper. And I'm not going to say like, oh, like a, I think the way he did his social media was a really good way to kind of like evaluated your social media because he gives you game he talks he it's just the way he he tells you game okay. whether you want to listen to what he's saying or not what you said no i just said okay and i was like yeah i, I, I gotta check this guy out who else any other influencers oh sorry and i think like right off top that's like the, really the main person i look at so i try not to overwhelm myself with a lot of people yeah because it's easy to do especially even on, especially even on this side, you know, we're like, you know, we're looking at guests, we're looking at people I talk to, you can get overwhelmed yeah. trying to pick people. I feel like there are a lot of people out there who are interested in doing what you do, but they're scared, whether it be, you know, T-Town, the podcaster. Um, I know you said you're stepping away from me a little bit, but T-Town, the, the slot channel player, mm -hmm. people look at it. And they're like, wow, I want to do that, but they're scared, you know, and I don't mean scared like to make fun of it, but it's a scary thing to step out there. What, what are three tips you would give people 
to pursue a dream like like what you've done? First, have an idea. Um, don't be a, have an idea. Two, don't be afraid. And just three, just go for it. Like, try to find an audience that fits you, because I think finding an audience will be the hardest thing you do on any social media platform. You know what I'm saying? And be yourself. That's probably more, but be yourself. I think that's like the biggest lesson on YouTube or in social media is being yourself. So who's a better slot player, Brittany or T Town? Uh Brittany. <laughs> she the <a> better <laughs> Um In keeping with the theme of sexiness, what is the sexiest thing about T Town? Uh, sexy thing about T Town, probably T Town. Look, why you got to you got me talking in third person? <laughs> um, uh, I would just say probably the personality. Like, just I feel like my personality is, you know, once I get out there and show my personality, that's probably what draws people in a little bit more. I hope for the rest of the day you keep making a mistake and talking and just call yourself T Town. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna talk like that in in first person or third person all day long. It's my fault. Um, in keeping with the theme of sexiness, what is the sexiest thing about people? What makes people sexy? What makes people sexy? Um, somebody that's themselves. Okay. Um, people, someone who's smart and that ultimately like to have fun, but you know, they can contain, like, they're not like crazy wild, but I don't know, stuff like that. I think that's what makes someone sexy is them being themselves too, is ultimately. All right, it's time for the quick game where we like to give our guests a chance to run through some entertaining questions. T-Town, are you ready? Yeah. All right, don't overthink it. Here we go. Texting or talking, which do you prefer? Talking. Favorite day of the week? Uh, Friday. You know, nobody ever says Tuesday. As the one day nobody's ever said. It's weird. Um, favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? I, mean, uh, in the, I think it's Indianapolis. Really? Oh, man, I've been to Indianapolis a ton of times. What are you doing up in Indianapolis? Is, it, is that where Mall of America is? Wherever no, that no, is. no, like that's, that's Minneapolis. Minneapolis. I almost said Minneapolis, but I, would, I, I wasn't sure myself. Wait, are you a mall rat? No, it would just, I just, I think the atmosphere of it is, is a beautiful place. It is. And, you know, I, I grew up a little bit of a mall rat. But yeah, Minneapolis is a nice place. Well, probably the cleanest city I've ever seen in my life, but it's also the cold as hell. It, it's cold in July in Minneapolis. <laughs> that place is freezing. What's, um, what's the last song you listened to? The last song I listened to, J. Cole, Middle Child. Would you rather be able to speak any language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Oh, talk to animals. Favorite holiday? Fourth of July. On a scale of one to 10, how good of a driver are you? With 10 being the best. I'm a nine. Uh, invisibility or super strength? Super strength. And last question, but my favorite, who truly inspires you? I know you've already, you, you had mentioned your mom and your grandmother. Who else? Who inspired me? I would say uh, my little brother. He passed away, but my little brother inspired me every day. That's a sweet answer, and I'm, I'm sorry for your loss on that. Good people, sexy people, that wraps up our interview with the fascinating podcaster and gambling genius, Tita. Oh, wait, here, I'm, I almost forgot this. You're a Southern person. Cheese grits or sweet grits or plain grits? Uh, plain grits with some sugar and milk. Oh, you do sweet grits? Oh, no. <laughs> See, Tom, we can't talk anymore because I, I, I cannot do sweet grits. Yeah, not too sweet, though. I got, uh, I got some Mississippi roots. So okay. I, uh, I got to do plain grits with uh, salt and pepper. That's it. Ooh, man, that sounds tough, though. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like some rice. <laughs> Wait a minute, you, got, you throw a little butter in there, but other than that, T, thank you so much for yeah. joining us this evening. One more time, let people know where to find you. 
You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, T Town Gambler, and Gambling Advisory the Podcast. Folks, you heard it here. Definitely check T Town out. T, thank you so much. You take care. All right, thanks, man. <laughs> Sus celos nunca dejaron que fuera bella. Me controlaba todas las noches, noches en vela. Con sus peleas, con mi persona y la botella. Yo te quiero, pero déjame. No me amas, eso se te ve. Y si sigues, pues agárrate. Que esta chica no la vuelva a ver. Yo te quiero, pero déjame. No me eso se te ve y si sigues pues agárrate que esta chica no la vuelva a ver lo quiero ser Estoy pa' amigas